Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. Last week, I discussed learning how to have an attitude of gratitude. Please go back and listen to episode 19 if you haven't already done so. I promise it will be worth your time. Today, I want to talk about the value of broken pieces, or more accurately, broken people. You may have heard of the Japanese art form called kintsugi, where broken pottery pieces are put back together with gold, forming a stronger, more beautiful piece of art with visible scars as part of the design. What's so interesting is uh, kintsugi means golden repair or golden joinery. The final artwork is a combination or the joining of the broken pieces of pottery with the new materials to create an end result that is the same yet very different. The human experience is very similar to this Japanese art form. We are, in essence, a tapestry of, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly parts of our lives. Every time we've had to heal from something that knocked us down a peg or devastated us, we emerge the same person, but a little different from what we learned from the experience or about ourselves. We found out that the struggle, the trial, or the attack brought out parts of us that we didn't even know existed. Strength we didn't know we had, and lessons we didn't want to learn, but that did make us, you know, stronger, better, or wiser. This is significant because kintsugi is a metaphor for life and embracing our flaws, our imperfections, and our broken places, thus making us, as I said before, stronger and better and wiser than before. Because as a quote I read said, you won't realize your full potential until you get through some tough times. We live in a world where perfection or the appearance of having a perfect life is encouraged and in a sense glorified. Social media highlights the best and the most put together parts of our lives lives, our carefully crafted masterpieces, the highs and not the lows. Even in personal relationships and daily interactions, we tend to not want to tell or show people the not so great aspects of our lives, the things that are not going well. When people say, how are you? The typical answer is fine, great, or something like that. When sometimes we're really falling apart inside or we're really depressed or even maybe suicidal. The truth is humans are complex beings and there's always an area of brokenness present in our lives. Just as sure as you are succeeding in one area of your life, you are likely struggling or failing in another area because there are no perfect people or and there are no perfect set of circumstances to make our lives easy or trouble free. The Bible says the sun will shine on the just and the unjust. We know that the rain falls on everybody, not just the select few. The good, the bad, and the ugly of life happens to us all. There is no amount of money, social status, influence, intelligence that will cause you to be exempt from having the full human experience while living on this earth. If you haven't been through a storm yet, keep on living because one is surely headed your way. I don't say that to discourage you, but to encourage you to embrace the good, the bad, and the ugly of your life and to give yourself permission to be imperfect. Because when you show who you really are, you give others permission to be who they really are as well. I really believe depression and suicide rates are so alarmingly high due to the fact that we generally don't embrace or even talk about the broken areas of our lives. You can't fix what you don't acknowledge is wrong or in need of repair. You can't, you know, for example, seek help for depression if you don't admit you're in fact depressed. Also, other people can't help or support you if you aren't honest with them about where you are. If we if we begin to acknowledge and embrace what's broken in our lives, that's when we're being our true selves, not just the best or the carefully crafted version of ourselves. And we also give ourselves opportunities to grow and to improve by repairing what is in fact broken. Also, much can be learned, you know, from showing your imperfections and treating your life like a tapestry of your strengths, your weaknesses, your highs, your lows, you know, that good, bad and ugly that I talked about before. All of that makes you uniquely who you are and it makes your life story interesting. 
And showing your scars, as I said before, gives others permission to show theirs as well and to seek appropriate help for themselves if it's necessary. Because each scar has a story attached to it. Telling that story, your story, could help someone else who might be walking through the same experience to know that they can make it through or they can overcome the brokenness in their own life. They won't feel so alone and isolated, which really is a major contributor to depression and suicide. Your, your scar story can really become a testimony, which gives someone listening a roadmap to navigate their own situation. So so what does Kintsugi ultimately teach us about life, you know, in summary. It, it really, Kintsugi teaches you that your broken places, if you're willing to show, share, and repair them, can make you stronger, wiser, and better than before. I want to read something I read about how Kintsugi, you know, applies practically to our life. Have you ever needed God to do a little Kintsugi restoration in your life and with your heart? Do you get caught listening to the lies that swirl around and whisper to you in your weakest moments that you're broken and you can never be healed, that you'll never be loved the way you are, that no one will accept you, that you aren't smart enough, pretty enough, rich enough, good enough, period. It is often at this moment that we lose our grip and everything comes crashing down, rendering us feeling useless and forgotten and shamed and rejected and shattered and beyond repair. But I have some good news. You see, much like during the process of Kintsugi, where nothing is too broken that can't be fixed and made whole, we are never too broken, too shattered, too hidden, too much of a misfit for repair, for a beautiful restoration and for wholeness. There's a quote, I am thankful for the struggles because without them, I would not have found my strength. Hemingway uh, is quoted as saying, we are all broken. That is how the light gets in. So when we let go of the unrealistic image of who we think we're supposed to be, we can get on with being the unique person God created us to be. Um, there is a, a, a term that I... I stumbled upon and I, I absolutely love it. And it's called flossom. F-L-A-W-S-O-M-E. Flossom. And and it's defined as an individual who embraces their flaws and knows they are awesome anyway. Flossom. I love that. Because sometimes tragedy and triumph are twins. It can be as Charles Dickens is quoted as saying, the best of times and the worst of times, all at the same time. Bitter and sweet, you can be succeeding in one area and simultaneously failing in another area. So if a paradox is happening in your life, I say to you, hang on, keep moving forward and stay positive. Uh, there's a scripture that I love and it says, cling to what is good. Uh, until your tide turns, find that one thing that you can hold on to, that little bit of hope, that one good thing, positive thing, and cling to that. Cling to what is good until your tide turns, until your situation changes. Remember, light always dispels darkness. Night eventually becomes day. The sun never fails to rise and trouble don't last always. You may have heard the expression that life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to what happens. Perspective is everything. Be encouraged and consider the following. I wrote this many years ago and I want to share it with you today. Consider the following. Number one, roses are beautiful, but the thorns hurt. Number two, children come into the world via a mother's pain. Number three, the sun shines in the harshness of winter. Four, rain makes things grow. Five, seeds germinate below ground in dirt. Six, diamonds and coal are different forms of the same element, carbon. Seven, diamonds are made under extreme heat and pressure. Eight, gold is formed from fractured rocks. Nine, volcanic eruptions create mountains. Ten, lemons are sour. But when squeezed and combined with sugar, produce lemonade. 11. Jesus said in this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Peter Marshall is quoted as saying, when we long for life without difficulties, we need to remember that oaks grow strong in contrary winds and diamonds are made under pressure. There's a scripture that 
we are to rejoice in our sufferings because suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, perseverance produces character, character produces hope and hope will never put us to shame. There's another scripture that after being tried, you will come out as pure gold. Yet another scripture, God is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. See, there's value in brokenness. The Bible says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. People make mistakes all the time, but God doesn't make mistakes. He made you with intention and for a purpose. So use your broken places to tell your story and to show the world that your value is in being all of who you are, being your authentic self, scars and all, and all of who God made you to be. Show your scars. Tell your story. Uh, there's a final quote I want to uh, share, and that's by Dr. Maya Angelou. And she says, I can change what happens to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. Every time you emerge from a broken place in your life, you become more valuable because you now have strength, more strength and, you know, knowledge and endurance and power and a testimony that will encourage someone else to fight to, and to emerge from their own broken place. Thank you for listening to today, today's episode. Please come back next week for a special interview segment on the topic of personal success. Bye for now. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates, released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.